I think this show um, has sort of evolved from what maybe people originally thought it was going to be to kind of a dysfunctional family drama about this like group of friends who are trying to, you know, navigate relationships in this world. That's true. The expectations of what the show was because of the name. Um, a lot of people do say that. They come up and say, this show's completely different than I thought it would be. And I'm like, good. Yeah. <laughs> I think that, that Grayson and Lori are, are two people who uh, are kind of cut from the same cloth a little bit. And um, they sort of find each other. And then very quickly realize it, it's not what should happen. Like, you know, I think that they realize almost instantly that it's a lot of fun, but they're just, they're better off as friends. Mm -hmm. I think they, they get that quickly, but they also, they, they don't really regret anything. They're yeah. pretty cool with it. They're just adults. <laughs> they're adults. I'm sad a little bit uh, about it. It's been such an amazing journey, and we've become so close. All of us are like a big family over there. And, Especially this year, it really feels similar to the first year's type of magical camaraderie kind of thing. Uh, so I think we're all going to miss that. Um, yeah, we're all checking ourselves because um, nothing said season four like bitter. And now season six has rolled around and we're all just savoring every second that we have together and every moment on the show is becoming special again and it's like Josh said, it's like shooting the, the pilot of the first season because um, we all see the end in sight and, and we know that this is a limited thing and it's going to be over. Well it's what, it's what you hope you'll find when you leave the stage and go to work in front of the camera that you'll still find yourself playing great scenes that crackle with subtext, danger, electricity, and I was, I'm happy that I found that on this television program, and most of those great scenes end up being between John Locke and Benjamin. It's just, it's so much fun, and, and really satisfying. It's, it's what you dream of when you're a kid, or you're a young actor, you think, just let, just let me play some great stuff in my day with great people. Yeah, it's a we. I think we have um, we, we have a similar history in the theater. I mean, we're both based in that, so we have a we have a very similar working style. So it's very comfortable. I mean, and I and you have a you have a comfort level and a trust level that's you know that's uh, pleasant. Kaplan is um, an interesting little bucolic. Bucolic is the word. Town, uh, because on its surface, it's really beautiful. Norman Rockwell. Yeah, exactly, Norman Rockwell and the people are kind and everything looks so beautiful and in its place. But uh, underneath it all, there's a real sadness and a real grief going on in this town. Seething with mystery. Mm -hmm. Seething with mystery. <laughs> and um, it's sort of, you know, the tone of Haplin, I think. It's like everything looks okay, but it's not, and why? And, and, you know, and we hope people care because it's sort of what the show's about this town that has a dark uh, dark history and, and we're trying to find out now it's things are starting again trying to find out why everybody's a suspect in this I think this you're deal. more suspect than I am do you reckon yeah right, why because I, I seem kind of slightly sinister yeah <laughs> but you seem quite sinister too <laughs> It's kind of got some of everything. Yeah. There's, there's action, and there's murders, and there's mm -hmm. funny stuff, and there's psycho sex. people, yeah, there's sexy stuff. Everything Americans love. That's right. <laughs> somebody gets a spike in the head, somebody gets mm -hmm. beaten up, somebody gets cheated on, cheated so, yeah, on that's somebody right. gets amputated, so it's all... It's a happy time. <laughs> mm. Season two, it's, it's a little bit sexier, it's a little bit edgier. There was a... Um, I think midway through the season, Erica had already been chased by a bear, and she partied with one of the biggest rock bands of all time, and she stole a Mercedes Benz. She had a Groundhog Day do-over. Uh, so it's, it's, it's very exciting, but it's the same show, but we do explore more of the time travel elements. There's new characters that are introduced, um, but I think that the big question for people coming out of season one was what's happening with Dr. Tom. What we're filming and, and what I'm finding um, Kind of is this interesting piece of maturity and uh, a bit about marriage, maybe about you know what it means to be married over the long haul, what it means maybe for him to forgive and for me to forgive myself and for me to find my way back to this man that I um, I, th 
think, you know, I always hate when they say I loved you once or they have lines like that. I'm like, I think she always loves him, but, you know, wants to partner with for a lifetime. And I think there's an interesting journey starting to happen right now with that. So it'll be interesting for me to see what other, what other people think. It has been, it's just like the greatest feeling when people embrace what you're doing and appreciate it and look at it and really judge it for what it is as opposed to some preconceived notion of what they have. And I think people have really, really given this show a fair shake. And I didn't expect that at all. And so it's been just positive and uplifting and, and so supportive and we just feed off of that. The great reviews we've gotten from critics in the New York Times saying that we were one of the top 10 shows of 2009 was huge and such an honor. So I, I think that all of the positivity has been really exciting. And I mean, I know I'm having fun and I think it's funny and I like it, but to hear from other people just makes it that much better.